Hi, it's Molly from Pen Hub Studio. Today I'll be showing you how to draw two halflinger ponies in coloured pencil. So I'll be using three types of pencils to draw these horses. So I'll be using Faber Castell Polychromis for my main go to pencil, um, Caran Dosh Illuminance for final layers, and the only other one I'll be using is my Don't Drawing Tonys White, which are the greatest for white highlights. So starting on her neck, I'll be using light colours working down to my darker colours. There's a light brown tone and now some shadows. And with the ear, same thing, start with my light working down to my darker tones. Now I'll be using polychromous black with her eye, but it's so small I can't do much. So I've just outlined it and then left filled in a little bit and left the catch light in the eye. So starting around, I'll start with the cream and then now a light brown to block in their hair direction. So I'm going through with some lighter, some darker browns to add the shadows around the, under the mane. So same with the ears, I've started with the cream. Now that is a lighter down to darker colors. And I'm using this light reddish brown for some glazing on the final layers. So same thing, cream. And then there's my reddish brown. And then see, I'm, um, Mark out where the hair direction goes and the length of the strokes and all that. So I use uh, tracing. I, I trace this, uh, the line drawing onto my paper. That's how I got it on there. Um, a lot of people, you can freehand. Um, some people trace, but I just find tracing's fastest for me. Um, so I've started, so I blend that little bit with uh, Odla Solvent. So when you're drawing a horse, you've always got to remember the bone structure. Uh, they've got very fine uh, skin and hair, so you can really see what's going on underneath. So you've got to pay close attention to your reference photo. So as you can see, there are all the little lines, the shadows and the highlights. That's the bone structure. So I'm blending it a little bit with Odla Solvent. So um, see, I'm going to go through and block in where everything goes with that light brown. And there, you see if the little the pencil with the white lead, that's my do and drawing Chinese white. So I'm going through with cream and just burnishing and then white, burnishing the highlights, pull out those little white highlights. But remember, if anything needs to stay completely white, you've got to leave it white. You can't go back and what lighten anything up to pure white anyway. It's almost impossible. So I'm using a little bit of grey to add the little hair details on the white. See, I, I didn't go overboard. I just a little outline, a little few little hairs, and it is so small you can't really see. So, on the little muzzle, I start with a light brown, and then as you can see, there's my darker brown. So I've added where the shadows will be going in the nostril and around the nostrils. So I have a general idea where everything was going to go before I go in with my black, which is what I'm doing now. Um, so there's a little bit of blue, and then my black, adding the very final very darkest areas so always make sure your pencils are very sharp that's a very important part in drawing realistic animal fur so I'm just glazing with a little bit of light grey and just pulling it all together and I'm using my Caran Dosh Luminance White for a few of the highlights so as you can see I've added a bit of hair under his chin just a few little light strokes and now saying on the mane so that watching your reference photo very carefully as you really only have one chance of getting this main right. So I'm using very, very fine lines with my cream and then my little, I think that's called, so I think that's terracotta in the polychromis. Very, very light pencil strokes, very fine watching your reference photo where all the clumps and clusters go. Same with, thing, with the main, I'm just defining the little edge clusters with a little few darker colors and then going through with my creams, whites, light browns and just blocking in everything. So keeping everything very light, watching your reference photo. So I've added a few little gaps in the mane. You can see the neck through that. And I'm being very careful where to add my highlights and shadows. Oh, so 
missed a bit of footage on the chest, but so I've just started with my creams, light browns, working down to my darker tones. Watching my reference photo, always start with your light first, working down to dark colors. It's a lot easier than saying dark to light. You can definitely do it, but it's definitely easy if you do it that way. Um, so you can, you can see what I've done here. So light browns, I'm blocking with my shadows are with my darker tones, and I'll be going through with my black. Oh, I've blended that and then with my white um, glazing a little bit so first layers and then blending with odorless solvent you can use uh, odorless mineral spirit zest it they're all very similar just to dissolve the pigment a little bit and um, get rid of the gritty grainy look I just use them on my base layers when I'm doing colored pencil drawings I'm just using some dark colors just for the very final shadows and whites for some glazing the highlights. So I'm blocking in with my back legs now. Um, so I'm going to be using a f some duller tones just to give the impression that it's further away, not as rich um, and just slightly lighter than the front legs. Um, see, it's, I'm keeping it very gray and subtle and there's the tail just keeping that very simple not to draw attention to it because we don't want the tail the tail to draw attention we want the head and the eye so that's why you keep all the very sharp details around the head and some of the looser uh, lighter lines around the uh, places that you don't want the attention to be drawn to so I've done the exact same thing with this horse's eye and then I'm doing the same thing with the ears lighter colors working down to darker colors and then there is my little white. So I'm going to um, leave that little white stripe almost completely white. Only just going to add a few little grey areas just for the hair, uh, hair direction and the shadows. So I'm, See, I've got very, very sharp pencils. So I can get those fine lines for the bone structure and the hair direction. So I've done light greys. And then I've got my dark greys for the shadows. And if there's any pink, uh, any white that um, stripe that ends down on the nose, it always tends to turn pink for some reason. Um, so you always got to add that in. That's a that's um, something you want to keep a, be aware of when drawing horses, because those little details, horsey people will notice them. So I'll be using a dark brown that one uh, just to go through and adjust all those shadows, making sure they're dark enough in the right places. And defining the hair direction. So for the forelock, I'll be starting with my light tones, working down to my darker tones. My darkest being this very dark brown. So last bits on the face, and then starting on the neck. So I've done with my light browns, and then there's my darker tones. So I'm defining where the muscles are and the groove going down the inside of the neck. So I've blended that with Odla Solvent and then going through with my cream and then my darker tones for the mane. So paying very close attention to my reference photo. Remember this is uh, be very hard to go back and lighten things up if you go too dark. Um, black, manes are, oh, black manes are so much easier than white manes. Um, or cream as this one is. Um, so for the shoulder I'm making sure I'm getting all the shine marks on the shoulder where the muscles are. That's uh, very important to get those right. And I'm going through with my Ola solvent. And there's my finished piece. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Now you can follow me over on Facebook and Instagram. Links below in the video description. Um, thank you. Bye.